Hi there, Pastor Clay here. I was reading recently a story about the Prince of Wales years ago going to India on an official visit. And at that time, India was a British colony, and it was a big deal to have the Prince of Wales visiting. And so they had massive crowds of people who were waiting, hoping to catch a glimpse of royalty. And as he got off the plane, all the dignitaries were shaking his hand and welcoming, welcoming him. And, and he noticed a barrier that was holding back the crowds. And he asked that the barrier be open so that as many people as he had time to greet could come forward and greet him. And they were very taken back by that, but they obliged. The next time he visited, everyone remembered what he had done. And there were 10,000 outcasts that were waiting for him, and they had a large banner. And instead of welcoming him as Prince of Wales, they welcomed him as Prince of Outcasts. When I read that story, I thought immediately of Jesus. Jesus was the ultimate king, king of the universe, you know, way more impressive than the Prince of Wales. But he could also be called the Prince of Outcasts because even though he was a king, he laid down his... Um, style as a king so that he could operate as a servant and show love and humility to all people, and especially to the outcasts. Uh, there's a collection of three stories that I believe Mark intentionally clustered together in his gospel um, at the end of chapter one of Mark and going into chapter two, and, and they're in your, your notes for discussion in this group. And in these stories, Jesus heals first a leper at the end of Mark chapter 1, and then um, heals a paralyzed man in chapter 2, and then calls a tax collector, Levi, who is also known as Matthew. It was uh, Levi Matthew or Matthew Levi, just like Simon had two names, Simon Peter or Peter. But uh, we have t three outcasts that Jesus shows love to. And in that society, you got to get your mind back into that culture. Uh, people with leprosy were shunned. They were um, cast out. They were to live alone. Re you can read about it in Leviticus 13. They had to cry out, unclean, unclean, all the time if anyone came around them. And so it was a terrible life. And yet Jesus reaches out and touches this guy and shows him love and heals him. That was unheard of in that culture. The paralyzed man in that culture people understood them to be under the condemnation and judgment of God if they had a disease or a disability like this. And so he had to live with that stigma and with that perhaps guilt. And yet Jesus reaches out to him and heals him. And then, of course, this tax collector was just hated by everybody because they were cheaters, they were liars, they would take money for the Roman government, but they would add extra tax for themselves, and everyone knew it, but they couldn't do anything about it. And so he was a very despised person. All of these people would be um, excluded from worship at the temple or the synagogue, the church of that day. And yet Jesus went out of his way to show them love and to show them care. You know, there are uh, many religions in the world, but they all have one thing in common outside of, of the Christian religion, and that is they're about man's search, human's search for God or for nirvana or for you know a better place in the afterlife. Christianity, on the other hand, is about God's search for humans, for us. He's, he's the one that took the initiative to come after us. So with all the other religions, it's about how worthy you can be. And you have to be only the most worthy to receive the most uh, reward. But the way of Jesus, rightly understood, is about a free gift being offered to the most unworthy, which really is every one of us if we get honest about our situation. And so while you look at these stories and think about practically how you as an individual or as a group can reach out more intentionally and effectively to people who are outcasts in our culture. I want to ask you also to think about these stories personally and think about your experience with Jesus because maybe you identify with the leper and you feel some uncleanness in your life because of sins or problems or hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And uh, take courage as you see how he treats this leopard and touches him and speaks to him. 
Uh, maybe you relate more to the paralyzed man. There's something in your life, guilt, debt, addiction, something that just leaves you feeling in bondage like you're paralyzed. Um, take heart as you look at how Jesus treated him. Or maybe you relate more to this tax collector in the sense that you've gotten involved in some things in your life, maybe in the past where you didn't have the best reputation. And uh, yet take courage by the way Jesus invites him into his inner team. And think about how that was for the other disciples too as you have your discussion. One more thing. Can I encourage you to um, be kind to each other in this discussion? Because as you see, if you get there in the questions, there's some questions about how we as individuals and as a group and as a church might be opening our embrace to the LGBT people in our community. And um, that is a, a subject that can cause division in a group. Uh, that's not the intention, okay? So have your opinions, but don't get mad about it, okay? Don't be arguing with each other. Be kind to each other. We can, if you don't agree on everything, it's okay. You can agree to disagree without being disagreeable. Deal? God bless you. I hope you have a good study.